We're just going to do this podcast, Will. Uh, welcome to a podcast, a That's Good Sports podcast. Uh, I'm putting this on my main YouTube channel. Um, I'm here with Will Keys co-hosting this thing. I wanted to put it on the main channel. Just so everybody knows, Will Keys and I do a podcast. Right now during the off season, we're only going every other, every other week. And because I, I, words are getting very difficult for me. During the season, we post every week. So there's a link in the description. You can listen to this podcast on iTunes, Podbean, all that shit they tell you to tell you so you know how to listen to our podcast. And usually during the season, we'll post on my second channel. That's good podcast. So you can check that out because I think we're just losing subscribers there at this point. Well, the main reason I wanted to put this on the main YouTube channel is to say I'm going to be on vacation for the next week and a half. So there won't be any videos being uploaded until I return. And I just wanted to give everybody a heads up. I know most people don't give a shit. They just watch the videos kind of when they see something that interests them. But for the loyal people that show people up for do. every video, there's a small nugget of you lovely, lovely humans out there, mm-hmm. mostly men ages 18 to 45. For you guys who show up, I just wanted to let you know where I'll be, that I'm not abandoning you, and that Will and I will probably get another team or two broken down before preseason starts, but not much more than that. Uh, so that is the heads up. Yeah, I mean, there's some people that watch every video. I know there's uh, there's some people that drop everything and uh, watch Urinating Tree every time you put out a video, um, <laughs> according to the comments. But just know that um, while you're gone, I'm going to run a very shitty, low-budget version of your show. And uh, since I don't have a basement here, uh, I'm going to have to do it in my attic. So, uh, But unfortunately, uh, it's been you know or about 100 degrees. Uh, That's better. Just watching you sweat through it would be better. And so it's it's probably roughly like 120 in the attic at this point. Um, so I'll probably have to do it shirtless, but um, I think that just adds to the intensity of the if, program. If you could die hate. doing a live stream on my channel, I think that would help the popularity of my show. Anything for views. Yeah, die of dehydration in your attic, and then I can yep. get a million subs – sell the show for a lot of money. Uh, don't worry, I would be kind and generous to your family with some sort of I, life insurance policy on you that I right, have already taken out. I have a check for so, $200, yeah. Are you good for your troubles? <laughs> $200 for your dead son, Will. Just toss him a penny. <laughs> yeah, why, got, why couldn't these houses have basements and not attics? Yeah. <laughs> why? <laughs> You guys chose to live in Sacramento. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. No, uh, basements are not of uh, very much use when it starts flooding. I, I, I support putting out this on the main channel. However, uh, I'm extremely nervous now, and I'm leaving. So. <laughs> the, the criticism is, is much tougher on, on the main channel. Uh, All right, I'm back. I'm back. And people, you know what, you know what's great about the main channel, Will, is people do research for us. Yeah, they do. It's great. Like, you know where, you know where I'm going with this? I don't think so. Okay. So yeah, yes, in yesterday's oh, video, yeah, of course, yeah. Will, Will made a reference to a a fake college quarterback uh, named yeah. Philip Waterfalls um, for a joke, and we had Matthew <laughs> Abramson who left a comment saying, for the record, after doing an inappropriate amount of research, Philip Falls was an actual college player who never got off the bench uh, many years ago from the University of West Virginia. Sadly, I cannot confirm if he had 23 children or not. Uh, so we were, you were pretty wow. close at, at, at discovering Philip Waterfalls. Uh, Philip Falls also works for the joke. And we just wanted to let Matthew know we appreciate you doing the research on the fake quarterback we made up for a stupid joke. And by we, I say that that was a Will Key special. It was like a five out of ten as far as jokes go. But um, since he is from West Virginia, I think it's probably safe to assume that he has closer to twenty three kids than zero kids. Although he's probably not caught up to to Philip Rivers. 
Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Philip, that's a, it's a hard man to catch. Yeah. You, you could spend a whole lifetime. It's, it goes like Philip rivers, um, the, the Brady bunch, and then Genghis Khan, I think, have the top three amount of uh, offspring in history. Yeah, I forget what percentage it is, but it's an insane number of people on the earth right now are direct uh, descents of Genghis Khan. Yeah, uh, judging uh, by how both of us look, I think we are probably not one of those people. I don't know. <laughs> well, you've got the beard. I don't know. I, I should speak for myself, really. I need a little bit more of a tan, maybe. Yeah. I'm guessing I'm about the same height as they were back then. I think you'd, you'd, uh, you could maybe. probably duck on all of them there. Maybe be taller? Know, maybe, be honestly. maybe taller than... I don't even remember what time period that was. Ooh, uh, <laughs> Dude, I listened, I listened to... To 1500? I don't know. Yeah, I listened to a whole podcast about it a couple years ago, and I remember so little. So little information... Re- gets retained in my brain uh like like we mentioned there's not a lot going on right now (laughs) uh we're going to talk a little bit about philip Lindsay and maurice jones drew's ranking of him yeah mari cooper had a really great quote about the raiders uh and joe namath claims to have found the cure for cte basically uh and the panthers on all or nothing so actually, I mean, I guess I could ask you, did you see the, the Panther, the Cam Newton video on the airplane offering the guy money for the extra leg room? I didn't see the video, uh, but I heard the story. Apparently some people tried to make it into a racial thing, which mm-hmm. I, I have a tough time uh, wrapping my mind around that. Uh, all I know is that a 10 hour flight, uh, it costs probably more than $1,500. I'm just assuming depending on uh, what, airline you're flying with but uh i don't think i'd give up leg room uh, as a as a taller man myself i don't think i'd give up leg room for anything less than five thousand <laughs> and tickets That's... probably just like a lot of tickets um i like now here's where i have an advantage is as being a short guy yeah i can fit you comfortably got... pretty much anywhere on an airplane yeah um, no I'm also a slim man, so I can sit next to a big person, and I've got plenty of foot room with shit under my seat, so I would have gladly taken the money. Um, I just did, I really admire the the talent level of sports media people out there who can really turn nothing into a full-blown controversy. It really is that time of year, and you have to you have to applaud the the ingenuity to manufacture that take out of really a nothing story. I, I think we need to be doing more of that on this show. Yeah, we need to do more um, race baiting. Yeah, um, gender bashing. Mm-hmm. And oh, just false reporting, like just uh, fake. Yeah, completely Andrew. made up headlines. Yeah. Just, like, just saying the wrong thing. Getting duped by parody accounts. Right. <clears throat> we need more of that. <laughs> I, do, yeah. I do own the domain for clickbait sports, Will. So. Do you really? Yep. Wow. Are you just like waiting for someone to make you an offer? I'm waiting for somebody to help me learn how to run a business and fucking website. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I feel like... Uh, someone will come along within the next five years and that domain name will be worth like $200,000 at least. Oh, that'd be sweet. You know what would suck is if, uh, so let's say I spend another two years trying to build up that's good sports and try to sell my, my sports show. Uh, and that doesn't happen, but then, uh, I make $250,000 just selling the domain name, domain name, clickbait sports. I think that's what we should do is just invest in donate domain names. Yeah. I got that's good sports, that's good Broncos, clickbait sports, and heroes of dudes. <laughs> I don't know if I want to hear the uh the story behind the last one. 
It was just something my friend used to say all the time. And I think we were going to do a YouTube show called Heroes of Dudes. And uh, then I asked him if I could buy that domain name just in case. Just in case. I like it's it. Catchy. But just keeping it on the back burner. Yeah, you know. Should all we right. talk about Philip Lindsay? <clears throat> Yeah, because this is kind of old news by now. Uh, I think I talked about this on the BSN Broncos podcast when I guest guested over there. Uh, but I kind of had an, a thought about it today because I guess Maurice Jones drew ranked running backs and he put Philip Lindsay at uh, number 23. And then everybody's like, MJD's a fucking idiot. Did he watch any running back football last year? As a running back, how could he not see the talent of Philip Lindsay? Uh, all fair, but then I thought Philip Lindsay plays his best football as the underdog, right? Like, is this just another good thing to make Philip Lindsay think people disrespect him so he'll keep playing like really good football? Here's the thing I, I like that approach to it, and I think that's what we should tell Philip Lindsay is that. Um, just every day remind him that he's been ranked as the 23rd best running back in the NFL, even though he's closer to like 10. Uh, But I think this is just another case of uh, NFL.com having some bad takes. Yeah. And I should extend that to the NFL network because uh, we all know our good friend, Adam rank had a pretty rank take last week when talking about our team, the two and 14 prediction from Adam rank. We did a video about that. I'm sure you've seen it. It is stupid. Like, and it worked the whole point of them doing that. stuff is So people will read about football right now, uh, which is fine. Like I get it. Here's my thing. Just don't be an idiot. And he was clearly being an idiot. He was. Yeah. He's being an idiot. I I just don't think that like clickbait like that works in the long term. I think makes you, it discredits you. I feel like right. If I'm more aware of trying to be credible than him, what does that say? What does that say about the NFL Network? It does not say very much for uh, the industry of television altogether. Because I don't put a lot of uh, importance on credibility or fact. Like my number one priority is like, how do we make this funny? Then yes. are we are we within the bounds of accuracy? <laughs> it, with, by within the bounds, I mean just like kind of just not too, f- just not complete fiction. Right. It was like, uh, like I pissed somebody off because uh, yesterday, yesterday we did the video about the radio host in Kansas City mm-hmm. who criticized Andy Reid for not being able to discipline his players and then drew parallels to him as a father and whether he did or did not intentionally want to refer that to the death of Andy Reid's son who committed or uh, died of a heroin overdose. Like the guy's name is Kevin Keatsman. And I call them, I call them Keatsman for the whole episode and uh, put a reference in there. It's like, it's probably Keatsman. And somebody was like, how can I take you seriously if you don't even get his fucking name right? You, you call, I think he called me a you douche, a you douche wannabe journalist. It's like, okay, you douche is fair, but I do not want to be a journalist, no. my friend. <laughs> journalists suck. Journalists suck. They're uh, no, they're the absolute worst. I and again, like we we understand the inf- we understand the distinction between getting off some funny takes. Uh, and trying to like rile people up with some clickbait uh, and then just like having just atrocious, horrific, disrespectful takes like uh, Kevin Keitzman. I'm still going to call him Kevin Keitzman did uh, on the radio. Adam Rank, not quite that bad. Uh, maybe a notch or two below Keitzman. And then, of course, with all of our videos, like our OJ Simpson video is like at a pH level of 0.1. I don't know if that's acidic or basic in terms of takes, but I, uh, I'm going to go yeah, with I don't it. remember. It's been a while since chemistry. Uh, but going, <laughs> going back to Philip Lindsay, I thought it was interesting <laughs> because on January 2nd, so a, a couple of days after the season ended, uh, MJD ranked all the running backs in the NFL. 
mind you, we have not played any regular season games from between now and January 2nd. Uh, but then he ranked Philip Lindsay 13th overall. And by virtue of nothing happening in between, remember, he didn't, he didn't uh, hurt his elbow like after the season or anything. That was uh, – And it's his wrist, Will. It's or his, his wrist. wrist. Yeah, I'm sorry. God damn it. Uh, his 16th – that was the 16th game of the season, or the week 16 that he hurt his wrist. Uh, and apparently he slid back 10 spots in six, in six months by playing zero football. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. It's just like (laughs) – And that's on that works. Like, okay, MJD, we need you to do a running backs ranking list. Season's over. Look at the guys. Give us a list. Before the season (laughs) even starts again, it's like, can you do another one of those lists? Exactly the same, but just make it different. Awesome. I know not really any football has happened except playoff football. So maybe some of your playoff guys can move spots, but we need another list. Weren't any, like, running backs in the top 15 this year? <laughs> no one really came out of nowhere. I guess we have Le'Veon Bell to add to that list. But, yeah, he was adding like guys like uh, Dalvin Cook, Carrion Johnson, Aaron Jones, Leonard Fournette were all in front of Philip Lindsay. Like, mm-hmm. I understand that there's running backs better than him. You got Saquon Barkley, Todd Gurley. Even with the injury, Ezekiel Elliott, Christian McCaffrey, Le'Veon Bell. I'm sure there's a couple more that I'm leaving out that are inarguably at this point better than Philip Lindsay at football. And then there's a lot that you you know you can make a debate, like Derek Henry, blah, blah, blah. I I'm fine I'm willing to concede that he's somewhere in that uh second tier of running yeah. backs. And he's only played one season. Uh he was a rookie. He's got a he's gonna have a different offense this year. He's coming off a – I think that wrist injury is more significant than we've really understood. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I think he should be healthy by the time the season starts. It, it came at a, a decent time. but uh, and, and a lot of Philip Lindsay's success last year w- came on big chunk plays. Like he had a ton of plays over 20 yards and I think a handful of 40-plus yard rushes. Uh, there's no saying that he's going to have all of those big plays again. Um, so it's fair. Like if you're talking about projecting like where he'll finish, I don't know if he'll have a better or worse season this year in terms of production. And that's not saying anything about what I think of Philip Lindsay as a player. It's more like there's a lot of, un- there's just too many different factors going into it. So um you know, and if you want to, like, talk about something like that specifically, it would make sense. But in terms of dropping him down on a dumb list for no dumb reason, I think it's dumb, Will. And that's, that's what I think the point is. The lists are pretty much dumb. I think we yeah, decided – I, I mean, we've talked about it with, like, people ranking the best quarterbacks of all time. Oh, yeah. It's, it's – there's no, usually no point to it. You see Brady took a picture with uh, Peyton Manning today? Yeah, what's the deal? He's taking pictures with Huey Lewis, first of all. Uh, I'm not a huge Huey Lewis fan, but apparently you are. I said 134th best band of all time for me. I mean, there's a lot of bands out there. How many do you listen to at one given time? I only You can only listen to one at a time, really. Fair. <laughs> Songs are only three minutes long on average, so... <laughs> You've got time for more than 134. I would they're argue. out. They're out. Of, they're uh, they're in the top. They're out of the top 200. Anyway, yeah. No, I understand that. Takes a picture with uh, Peyton Manning today. What do you say? Oh, Spoiler oh, alert! From these... been friends the whole time. Yeah, well, I guess we kind of knew that, even though Tom Brady wrote that really snarky email about Peyton Manning that got leaked a couple years ago. If you remember that. Oh yeah. Yeah, Brady, I think, is way more vain than uh, Peyton Manning. Definitely. I mean, it, it is kind of hard to be vain when you're Peyton Manning. Um, he dresses well, I think. <clears throat> Manning's he's a better dresser. He's got a funny-looking face and head. It's hard to to take yourself too seriously. Do you think do you, do you think Tom Brady got work done on his face? That's what, exactly what I was going to say. And if, you can really tell in the, uh, in the Huey Lewis picture. Yeah, because we've seen that – 
I think I pointed out something where somebody made a comment about his face and then I looked at pictures and his face looks different. Yeah. It definitely looks different. I understand that like your face, the shape of your face and your head changes as you get older. Especially like, if you're doing that, steroids. Right. Yeah. And there's like that uh, time lapse of Brady as a rookie into like, you know, year, what is it now? Year 20 for him? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> what, here's my question. Yeah, decades of this man. My question to you, if you had like all the money in the world, would you get any work done on your face? Of course. Yeah. No, I'd turn, turn myself into Ryan Gosling. <laughs> I don't think you could. I don't think that's how it works. I, why not? If I have, all I think when you world, try to do I, that, it never, like when you want to morph your face into somebody completely different, I don't think I didn't it, say morph my face. If I have all the money in the world, I'm sending people over to Ryan Gosling's house oh. and I'm lifting his face from his head. Face off yeah. style. Yeah. Got it. Which is what it looks like Tom Brady did. <laughs> he he just looks, yeah. No. He doesn't have a wrinkle on his face, which is, we talked about it. He's 40. Yeah, all wrinkles are gone. I think maybe I would try to, I w- maybe I would have like a fake scar put on my face to make me look really badass. I like it. Yeah. Like I have small scars all over my face, but like one big one. I just want people to be scared of me when they see me. Not women, but men. I want men to fear me. Chicks dig scars. It is established. Yeah. On the power rankings of things that chicks dig, I think it goes scars and then the long ball. Yeah. And then abs. Yeah. And then just not me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Next. Uh, I forget where this was from. Maybe USA Today or some shit. But sure, why not? <laughs> Amari Cooper, uh, <laughs> quote about playing for the Raiders says, "I just felt like I was wandering aimlessly out there." I don't know what the context was before <laughs> the quote or after the quote, but I think that is a perfect way to illustrate how probably a lot of guys who went through the Raiders organization felt like when they were there. <laughs> I think the uh, original question was uh, posed to Amari Cooper as um, compare your tenure with the Raiders uh, to a story from the Old Testament. (laughs) And he he chose to say that he was wandering aimlessly. That would be impressive. Yeah. I wish I like that question. We should start asking it more. Yeah, I think it's fair to say he is a player who, for some reason, became significantly underutilized in their offense. Uh Right, he just randomly had like 15 catches against Denver in week two, uh, and then they said, "Nope, don't like this. We're not <laughs> not doing this anymore." Hate it. Yep, give the ball to Seth Roberts. More Jared Cook. Did, where where did Jared Cook land again? New Orleans. Oh, well, that's good. that'll be fun. That'll be fun to watch. New Orleans might be the a good team to do a, a video on too. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, another player that um, decided not to go to the Patriots in free agency. Good, good for Jared Cook. So we need to make a list of those guys, like uh, him, Adam Humphreys. Oh yeah, there's someone else that I'm forgetting. But uh, we need to like either have them on the show and have like a roundtable discussion with them. Or just skip that part and, and send them flowers or a fruit basket. Yeah. This would be a great uh, place to, if I had a flower, like the 1-800-Flowers sponsor. God damn it. Well, we don't have it. <clears throat> uh, okay. Yeah. Now. You pretend and just build them. And, like, they probably have so many advertisements. <laughs> you start billing that, a bunch of sponsors? Yeah. It's like, do we run ads on this show? We should. Probably. We should try. That'd be some sweet free money. I like it. I thought I thought this was an interesting stat. Uh, I saw it on NFL Reddit, and it is that the Jets, the New York Jets, have won their division just four times in fifty nine seasons, which is the worst of any team in the NFL. Who was their quarterback the last time they won the division? I think it was. It must have been Chad Pennington. Pennington. Yeah. <clears throat> Because when they had Sanchez, the, what the, were they wild card teams? Yeah. 
Yeah, that would be a good that 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 would be like good information for us to have known already. I'm pretty sure. Did they win? Did they win their division the year that they uh, lost to Denver in the AFC Championship game in 1998? Oh, uh, probably. That sounds about right. That would make sense. And yeah, they just. I was just surprised. Like, I guess I would have thought Cleveland. But you know, Cleveland Browns had success in the '80s, and yeah, I guess whenever Jim Brown was there, maybe I don't remember. Sure did. Yep. Jacksonville have because yeah, they've won their division. Have they? Maybe shouldn't they, they have? Won, not in '96. They're a wild card. They might have in because they got to the championship. So was that ninety six when they got to the championship? Oh yeah, no, they won. They won the AFC South two years ago. Oh, that's yeah. They almost went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, they, so, beat, uh, they had two home games. Well, I guess I mean, maybe. if it's only four times, have the Jags won it four times? No, definitely not. So then. Have the Panthers won there four seasons. times or have the Houston Texans? Yeah, none of them had been 59 seasons. So I'm just curious to see, like – Texans had... have won it four times, I think. I, I feel like they win it every year and get that Saturday game, right? Recently, yeah. Mm-hmm. Please, God, never again. Now that Andrew Luck's back, uh, that division – that division – should be actually very competitive. It was pretty competitive last year, but this year should be really competitive. We love some AFC South football. Get it. Get it. Jags, Titans, Texans, Colts. I don't know. It'd be nice. Um, unfortunately, we're all going to be subjected to NFC East football again, uh, probably for as long as we live. But it would be nice if they sprinkled in the Colts and like the Texans on Sunday night football a little more often. I don't know. I like, I like when they play. They're usually pretty good games. Yeah. No, they've been interesting teams to watch. The Colts were fun to watch last year. Uh, yeah. But are you excited? Yeah. Go, Go ahead. for it. What? Hmm? Would you put Andrew Luck as your MVP favorite right now? Favorite? Ooh. Yeah. Top three, maybe. Who's ahead of him? Mahomes? Mahomes would be in there. And then probably Joe Flacco. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Probably Joe Flacco or uh Philip Lindsay or just like you know Jake Butt. Jake Butt. Yeah. I just want I want a tight end to come out of nowhere and win the MVP. That would be cool. I guess Gronk would have had the best chance to do that recently. Yeah. I don't think a wide receiver like, or any type of receiver is going to win an MVP unless it's like, you know, it's like, uh, with our luck, it's probably going to be like Tyree Kill next season. He's going to have like six return touchdowns and 12 receiving touchdowns and like five rushing touchdowns. He hasn't gotten his second contract yet, right? No. It'd be really cool if, like, he had maybe the like just a career year, and then got suspended forever afterwards and never got that fat contract. That'd be kind of funny. Chiefs fans are gonna be mad at us for. Uh... <laughs> I just lost all my my Chiefs yeah. supporters. God forbid. Baker, <laughs> Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield maybe could be in that conversation. I think it's possible. Maybe. It's possible. I mean, it's. When's the last time it was not a quarterback who won? Adrian Peterson. Ugh. <sighs> yeah. He could I win mean, it again, honestly. He could. I mean, it, by that standard, like Tyree Kill could win it too. Yeah. Just. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, yeah, Andrew Luck, Baker Mayfield, Mahomes, Russell Wilson always has a shot. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I guess you can consider Tom Brady, but I don't think so. 
Kirk Cousins. <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo. Did Cam Newton win it in 2015? Yeah. That's crazy. <clears throat> He's like a player I just can't figure out. Maybe if he had some le- – <laughs> maybe he just needs some leg room to stretch maybe out. Maybe he needs the leg room. Yeah. I watched a lot of him in 2015. On, I was like, this dude is a really good quarterback. People have been way too hard on him. And it was like the next season, I was like, oh, I see what, this guy sucks. I see what, people, are, <laughs> see what people are talking about. Like, he's just inconsistent. Sometimes, sometimes he's really impressive, and other times it's, he just looks inaccurate. Well, that feels like a good segue to, to mention that the Panthers are going to be on uh, Amazon Prime's All or Nothing this season, oh. coming July 19th. I'm are guessing you know that season ends in nothing. Yeah. Although I think it's going to be more interesting than because we had the Rams two years ago and then the Cowboys last year. And those two seasons were pretty lame, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, uh, the Cowboys made it to the playoff. Oh, no, wait. They, they did it the year not before. Not that year. Okay. You're right. They're just like some random, like eight or eight, eight and eight or nine or seven, nine and seven type season, which was very anticlimactic. But uh, the thing I like about the Panthers this season is like you get to see the collapse happen slowly in front of our eyes. Uh, and I think that's kind of morbidly interesting to see how a team falls apart from having, I don't know if they're like six and two or what, but uh, just seeing them absolutely um, implode down the stretch is going to be good television, I think. Uh, and I don't think anything's ever going to capture um, the first season in terms of um, likability and intrigue and just a, a really like lightning in a bottle type season that the Cardinals had in 2015. Oh yeah. Um, Cause that was really incredible television. Um, but I think this has a chance to be the second best season out of the, out of the four that there will be. I just hope they, uh, they do a lot of uh, focus on Matt Paradis. He's not going to be in it because they, uh, they signed it's, him after the season. Oh, it's from last season? Yeah. <laughs> so this isn't even, like, but did we just learn that they were filming them? Like, did they film in secret? Yeah, they do it in secret. That's what they do it every year. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, no, they're not filming them next season. Oh, I was getting confused by what you were saying. No. Oh, I'm so we get, we, will not be there. I thought you were projecting another mid-season collapse. Okay. No, no, no. This already happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Christian McCaffrey had an insanely good season, which Colorado people will love to keep up with. Yeah, Broncos there's fan. also uh, some C.J. Anderson drama, I'm sure. He was not very yeah. happy about how they used him. Yeah. Um. We're going to see, like, those, like, two backup quarterbacks that they use at the end of the year. Garrett Gilbert was in a game, I think, uh, and he went on to play in uh, the Alliance. The Alliance. RIP. Um, I, wish we st- I wish we found out who won the championship. Yeah, that would have been nice after all that work we put into it. Yeah. But we get to do the same thing next year with the XFL, Will. I want an XFL video game is what I want. Oh, that would be cool. I'd, I'd buy that. Yeah, I want. Yeah, I'm. I think we're all tired of Madden. I think yeah, we need, a we need good, something different. It needs to be like a hybrid between Blitz and Madden, basically. I like it. Yeah, take what's working for Madden and then adding like what made Blitz fun. Yeah, I. Who would say no? Vince McMahon, of course not. No, they'll make. They'll take the money. Man will merchandise anything. Uh, another thing we get to see this season, though, is the uh, 63-yard field goal that Graham Gano made at the end of the game. I think that's going to be oh. that's going to be pretty cool. Oh yeah, Gano had a, a pretty good season, didn't he? Did yeah. Um, final question on that though. Probably need a, probably hard to answer right now, um, but. If you could pick any team, knowing how the season turned out, to watch like a full season documentary on from the 2018 season who do you think you'd pick Broncos excluded who 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 would I pick from last year yeah good question 
Oh, I have Steelers. The Steelers. Yeah, that's pretty good. Steel. I think the Rams would have been interesting, just because they made it to the Super Bowl. Yep. And lost in a way I shall try to forget. I think we all shall. Steelers though had so much bullshit going on. Steelers would be great. Uh, I'll throw out there the Saints would be good. Oh Basically, yeah. Saints, you get a, a great ending, like in turn for television. I think the Colts to bring them up again. I think they'd be good oh. because they started one and five and finished ten and six, I believe. Yeah, especially if it starts with McDaniel's uh, screwing them over. Yeah, and Andrew Andrew Luck only being being able to throw a Nerf football uh, like a month before the season. And I'd then, like to just see him throwing the Nerf football. Yeah, and then just like suddenly becoming an MVP candidate. I want to see how that happened. Yeah, it's it's tough. I, and I don't blame them at all for uh, having the Panthers because there's probably not a lot of teams that are, like, still willing to have this and, like, have the cameras following them around. I don't know what the rules are. Yeah. I don't know what the hard knocks <clears throat> rules are, but uh, it's probably tough to get a – to convince a team to do this. But I feel like, yeah, the team has to agree to do it. And I'm sure Amazon – is offering them a good chunk of money, and that's what's going to get teams to do it. Yeah. Also, you probably get to, like, hang out with John Hamm. Oh, yeah, he narrates it, huh? Yeah. So I'll do it. Hang out with John John Hamm for a couple weeks. That's cool. Yeah, he's got a good narrator voice. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's let's finish with maybe the the most important news in football. That's right. That's about Joe Namath. (laughs) That uh, Joe Namath was on Howard Stern – and he essentially said he kind of thinks he found a uh, cure for head trauma. Yep. Didn't specifically say, I know we can cure CTE, but he relayed a story to Howard Stern about how he had at least five concussions when he played football. And he said these were like blackout concussions mm-hmm. uh, that he wouldn't want his kids to play football, but he would encourage other kids to play football. (laughs) Um, I think kids should play football, just not my kids. (laughs) uh, And that after watching some of his teammates suffer and decline from CTE, he went to the doctor and they noticed like two parts of his brain uh, weren't getting enough blood. So he started doing hyperbaric oxygen therapy which I think you can do either like via a chamber or he's kept saying dives. A so I'm crick, guessing yeah. like you could do dives, like in, you're doing the oxygen in water or something. But, and then he basically said he did 120 hyperbaric treatment sessions and those treatments cured his brain. Uh, the, the oxygen got back to where it needed to go. And despite reaching out to the NFL, they haven't decided to do more research on hyperbaric oxygen chambers for brain recovery. Um, I, I guess, yeah, I'll just say this. Like, I'm sure it doesn't hurt. Um, however, I reject the notion that he's the first quarterback to have cured concussions. That belongs to Russell Wilson, who cured his own concussion with uh, his nano bubbles from his, the concussion water that he was drinking at the in the 2014 NFC Championship game, nano bubbles. And didn't, so we need to throw aside hyperbaric chambers, right. oxygen, blood levels, whatever, and just start drinking Russell Wilson concussion water. I think you got to do them both. You got to drink the water while you're in the chamber. Uh, then your brain becomes too powerful. Well, actually, and, it turns the chamber into an atomic bomb. That's why they don't do it. <laughs> Didn't your brain is like vibrating out of your skull <laughs> you get out. Didn't T.O. used to sleep in a, a hyperbaric chamber? I think that was like Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward. Or maybe it was T.O. too, like while he was injured. So what What I did, because this seemed gives like... Him, gives him sexual powers. <laughs> I felt like uh, these claims by Joe Namath sh- should be breaking news like this should be huge nfl news if he found a cure for cte right turns out there's according to a quick google search 
there is not enough scientific research to suggest that uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy uh, can cure CTE or Alzheimer's or, or brain injuries. So I just wanted to bring up what could have been a breakthrough for, for football, but then say it probably isn't. It also doesn't say that there's evidence that disproves it. That's true. They said there's not enough research. It is entirely still possible. And since it worked on one person, it is therefore fact. Right. And I guess I would need to learn. Okay. So two parts of Joe Namath's brain weren't getting enough oxygen. I, I don't think that's what causes CTE though. I think it's from, is, is the CTE happen after the brain gets injured because then that part of the brain doesn't receive enough oxygen? And also what other factors, what other possible lifestyle changes did Joe Namath maybe uh, make like quitting stop. drinking <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna that could have affected <laughs> that might have helped i don't know the response for his brain um, yeah so once, once i stopped drinking seven days a week i saw all my teammates who are suffering from cte and i thought hmm maybe i should help them wait no i should check my brain first <laughs> and then went to the doctor and it turned out that my brain was pickled from alcohol. <laughs> yeah, I would like to see the difference in my brain if I just stopped drinking for a, for a month. You'd be like Goodwill Hunting, just like solving unsolvable equations at Harvard. <laughs> 20 minutes. Uh, I've cut back a little bit, but yeah, I think you're right. Maybe not Harvard. Maybe Okay, like- I might see. Yeah. Am I Yale. Saying? Yale. Let's say Yale. Yale. Or Princeton. I was going to say Cornell. I was going to go try to go for the offer, the office reference. That's fine. Yeah. How, how much do you think Cornell hates that show? Uh, I feel like they would like the reference, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's like a positive. Uh, I don't think like it's a positive connotation of, um, no, that, I mean, it's not like, yeah, Cornell but it's not alumni. overtly negative either. Oh, yeah. Mm, the Office. And the least likable character. What's that? Andy's what? Dislikable? Yeah, kind of one of the least likable characters, least I think. Like. It depends on the episode. It's true. Yeah. And his character kind of really changed from early on to later. I think it, were you just going to mention that it's uh, leaving Netflix? Yeah, that's big news. 2021 yeah. already there's already a petition out there to keep it tough blow to uh did we already talk about people this? without personalities i'm hoping by the time 2021 20, comes around that i've watched the office enough where uh, i'm okay taking a break from it for a while i don't really feel the need to watch anything uh after season four anything ever in the office yeah i feel like Seasons one through four are plenty. Hmm. No, that's wrong. <laughs> Find a new show, people. God damn it. There's so many shows out there, and you just keep watching The Office 23 times in a yeah, row. Yeah, but it's, that's because it's really good. I agree. No, it, it is. Here's the thing it, there's such a thing as, like, is it overrated? No. No. It's a really good show. Uh, is it, uh, does it get too, do people watch it too much? Yes. Well, that's fair. <laughs> People watch it more than any other show, it feels like, on Netflix. I think it's – but it's, there's an intangible sort of thing there. It's like – It's comfort food. Yeah. It, for whatever reason, it's like that cast of characters, that setting, it's like the, yeah. the thing you want to put on before you go to bed. It just makes you feel good. But, like – it just depends on the show. Like I can do the same thing with Parks and Rec. I can do the same thing with Seinfeld. Uh, Does Seinfeld okay. make you feel good though, really? Yeah. I like guess I, in a different way than The Office would. It's like be when you feel like you're in Jerry's apartment or when you feel like you're in The Office, like, you, I don't know. Your brain, it does, it makes a weird connection to your brain. We're like, yeah, this is all right. Yeah. These people and I are all like, I'm having an interaction with them. I'm here participating when you're not. 
I, I, I get that. It's more, it's more convenient, like more comfortable and less challenging to watch The Office and like The Wire or something like that. Yeah, um, like, see what, what I do is like, I'll binge through, like I've rewatched Breaking Bad so, you know, I'll watch an episode of that and then I'll watch an episode or two of The Office before I actually go to sleep or Seinfeld or you just got to find there. You got to find another one. And it's really hard to find new shows to do that. They're like all older shows. And I think if you grew up watching a show, you make a stronger connection with it. So nostalgia. Uh, I yeah. think we should bring back bring back Scrubs. No, oh, see, I never watched through Scrubs. Maybe that's one I should do. Pretty good. But uh Pretty good. We clearly run out of football stuff to talk. We got into TV. Yep. Because that's probably like TV oh, more than right. football, if I'm being that's really honest. Uh, right now, at this point in the season. All right. Uh, thanks for listening to the podcast. Like I said, taking a little break because I'll be on vacation. So, won't might miss a podcast. I don't know. I haven't looked that far ahead in the schedule, but we we'll be it, back. We miss it. Good night and good luck.